Today at shopdap.com, we're going to be talking about replacing a vacuum pump on a 2.5 Volkswagen Jetta. Okay, so before we go into the specifics of replacing a vacuum pump on a 2.5 Jetta, we are going to talk about why they fail. So what actually ends up happening with vacuum pumps around 2.5 engines, and keep in mind, this is the same for all 2.5 engines, which would include vehicles like Passats, Jettas, Rabbits, um, were the most common vehicles you'd find a 2.5 engine in. These were failing, and what they do is they cause an oil leak. And, and so where that oil leak is, is under on the seam of the vacuum pump here, where it will create an oil leak. And the reason why that is, uh, or at least the changes that they've made to it and why we suspect they have an issue is because the original versions of these pumps actually had a, what I believe is a steel outer section here and then this aluminum inner section. And because they were different materials, they would expand at different rates as the, as the engine heated and cooled, which would cause oil to leak from in between this section. Now there is a gasket behind this plate but unfortunately it's not available individually. And so you have to replace the entire vacuum pump when you do have this oil leak. So um, this is what you would need to replace. We'll have links to this, as well as the tools we have in the description below uh, where you can find the parts you need to replace your, your vacuum pump here. Uh, now let's talk a little more, bit more about specifics. Okay, so if we take a look at our engine bay of our 2.5 engine, the vacuum pump is located right below here. So we have, this is the engine cover, the air filters in here. You can see this duct, which is missing some pieces because it's an older vehicle. It, the air comes through here. This is the air box. It will run through there and then come back in here. Here's your mass airflow sensor. Right below here is actually where the vacuum pump is located. And so what that happens in this circumstance is because it is located above, right above the transmission, it will oftentimes leak down in between the bell housing of the transmission and the engine. So the engine's on this side, transmission's on this side, and it'll leak straight down. And oftentimes you will diagnose this as a rear main seal leak, thinking that you need to replace your rear main seal, and it's just the vacuum pump leaking oil down uh, from below there. So let's go beneath the car and check that out. Okay, so here we are underneath the vehicle. And as you can see here, we have some plenty of oily residue kind of all over everything underneath the vehicle. And based on what I'm looking at here, I can tell you that this vehicle has been leaking for a very long time. You can see kind of oil grime that is all of the subframe in the back there. And then this is kind of the fresh oil that's leaking right here. And this is gonna be all the same thing, all oil and then grime. So if you're not familiar, if you let an oil leak go for a long time, what happens is you get kind of this mist of oil that gets all over everything from driving and the, just the, the air hitting it and blows oil all over the place. And then kind of the dirt and debris of the road will kind of just cake on top of it and it will continue to kind of create this crustiness that you kind of see all over everything here. Uh, so this is going to be what is gonna look like when you have a vacuum pump leak. Again, it just leaks down in between and then you're gonna have all this and at the bottom point here, is where you're going to see this fresh oil. And, and again, the reason why this becomes a concern for most people is because this is the point where the engine and transmission mate together. And most often on other vehicles, this would be a place where you would see a rear main seal leak between because the rear main seal is between the engine and the transmission. And this is kind of that mating place here, which would be the normal place. One more note I did want to make before we go into this install, this particular pump is made by Pureberg. This is the manufacturer of the original vacuum pump from VW and Audi. So for anybody, we get this question pretty often from people in regards to parts like this. This part is the same identical part as the manufacturer part you would buy at a dealer. We offer that factory part as well, uh, but there's really no reason to purchase that one. This one has um, the same, is literally the same exact part. It actually has even the same part numbers on it. The only thing you won't find on this would be the factory VW stamp. Otherwise you're buying the identical part that you would buy at a dealer for much less price. So that isn't always the case with all parts, but this particular one, uh, the Peterberg one is the one you would wanna go with. And with that said, let's get into our install. Okay, so here we are under the hood of our 2.5. We are gonna start by removing our engine cover here. This is, again, the air filter on this vehicle. And so what we're gonna do is start by disconnecting this sensor here. And you're just gonna push back on this tab right here and then 
full pass there. I'm going to do the same thing with this sensor. The, uh, this is the mass airflow sensor. The connector is on the link on the other side there. Same deal. And now we have our spring clamp here. You can use regular pliers on this, but this is tough to actually take off without pliers like this. Uh, well, I'll have links to our, our version of these pliers that you can find in the description, but basically what it will do is hook around one side and have kind of a circle that hooks on the other side so that it's easy to get on and off. And then you can just slide this clamp down. You also have a lock in place here and allows this hose to slide back off the engine cover. Now, this has grommets on each corner. These, these are not easy to get off. As you can see, it's already cracked. This is probably because someone tried to grab it here where it's, it's kind of at its weakest point to pop it off for, for this exact type of situation. So you can see there, that one's off. And then get that off. Now, if you this particular vehicle did not have screws in, in this cover here because it's been off before and this is not like a uh, critical component. So a lot of times people forget to put them back in. This vehicle does have them missing. So uh, that's something that's not particularly uncommon. And that's off there. And last corner here. Pop that up. And I'm going to pull this hose back because it'll hang up the engine cover there. And then we can rotate this out of the way. Now I'm going to get this clamp back where it belongs just so that everybody can see where it is. Now what we're going to be looking for is to go straight down here, uh, right kind of below this hose here. So this pipe is uh, the throttle body pipe. And we're going to remove this throttle body pipe to get access to the area below it. And same deal with these spring clamp pliers. This one I'm actually going to let loose there. I didn't let loose here because this accordion piece is much weaker and it'll crush on these harder pieces. You can just pull it back like that. And then there were these, these pipes here. These are for secondary air injection. And what you do is you have this ribbed section right here. And what you, you push on either side of that, and then there's the parts that snap on are right here. So you kind of squeeze it and then wiggle and it will pull past there. You also can use like a flathead screwdriver on the side here to see if you can get those clips past. Um, I've always found squeezing them is the easiest way to make that happen. It really depends on the clearance because this bottom one, for example, is not an easy way to get your hand in there. And so depending on your ability to get your hand in this section, you may, you may want to try other methods. And I'll unclip that to get a little more clearance here. And as you can see, this is what we're working with here. You also could take things like picks like these. There's a 90, a 45, and a hook. They can oftentimes help with things like this because you can kind of stick it in there and use it to help you kind of pry things off without damaging them. And again, be careful with stuff like this because you can cause damage if you're not careful. And we have that one off. And the 45 is gonna be a better one for this rear one. And if you saw, what I did is I kind of went underneath it and I just twisted it out like that. And then you see it pulled down kind of past there. And then we can do the same thing on the other side. And you're going to kind of pry and wiggle at the same time. And you can see it's coming down there. There you go. And we're all set there. Take our throttle body pipe and pull that out of the way. Now we've removed our battery. We've taken off our cables. We can remove our battery tray. There are gonna be three 10 millimeter screws here, one here, 
one here and one here, and these are going to be what we remove. We take that, remove them, swing the battery tray out of the place, and get that out of the way. Okay, so here we are looking at our shifter assembly right here. We have to remove this so that we can take off the vacuum pump itself. So we're going to be first removing, uh, we're going to be removing the cable linkage here, these bolts here, and then the bolt that holds this assembly on top here. We also, also are going to mark where this, uh, this multi-function switch here the, uh, for the transmission is uh, for adjustment purposes, just to make sure it stays in place where it's supposed to. So we're gonna go ahead and, and clean it up here first so that we can mark it properly and so we don't lose our marks along the way because there's a lot of grime and oil here. So let's clean this up and then we will get back to that. All right, now that we're all cleaned up here, we're gonna make some marks here across these bolts and this is just some marking paint, but you can use anything for like uh, whiteout is also an easy one to use that I like to use. Uh, it allows you to have something that's you know accessible at home. You might want to also look at something like um, something like maybe nail polish or something of that nature. Might be something you could find around your house that would be easily accessible uh, that you could use for this type of thing. Now we're gonna take off this linkage here and the best way to do that is to take a flathead or something of that nature like this pry bar and pop it up and over. And all I use is a ball socket and this rubber grommet. So it's not really in there real well, but you need to have something that has enough leverage to reach over the actual thing to pull it up far enough to get over. Now we're gonna crack this 12 millimeter loose. And same here. And get them rest of the way off. You can either take them aside or you can throw them back in here just to make sure you don't forget which bolt goes where. These bolts all look a little, these look a little similar, although we mark these so they shouldn't be as big of a deal to get through. Now we're gonna take off the 12 millimeter here on top of this linkage. So we're going through this hose here and onto there. Make sure you don't drop it. And then there's a washer on top of here as well. You want to make sure you keep that along with that assembly there. Okay. Now, rock this linkage back and forth a little bit. You'll feel it start to loosen up and then you can slide it up and over and out of the way. Now we have our two 10 millimeters left and and two. And you can put them in the order you need to make sure you get them back where you, where you found them. Now the last thing we have is this castle nut here which prevents this from turning out. So there are tabs on here you actually have to flip up to allow this thing to turn out all the way. And the pick did not work as well as a flathead screwdriver. And then we're just gonna spin this up by hand. If you need to, you might need to use like an adjustable wrench or something, but it's not going to be super tight. And then make sure you t keep this, this washer with those fingers because you're going to want to lock that back up once you get that up there. All right. Now 
kind of just rock this back and forth. And get that out of the way. Okay, so now we have that uh, whole shifter assembly off. We're going to take this cover off of this of this pump. We've already loosened it on some of the bolts and removed this one in the top corner here. And we are going to take this off. Now, the reason why we're going to be taking this off is so that we can actually get this pump out of the vehicle because originally the correct official method of this repair is actually to remove the transmission from the vehicle because the pump cannot clear this shaft. So we're going to be using a little bit of a trick here to allow us to do this. And we are not going to need to reuse these screws because obviously our new pump already has screws in it. So we, I wouldn't suggest dropping them because you don't want to lose any screws in your engine compartment, but they are not particularly important if you do end up losing them. Now, now because this will have some oil in there, you will want to maybe throw a rag underneath here. Uh, this is already, we've already lost a lot of the oil out of this thing because we cracked it loose already. So in this particular case, it's not a big deal. And we have that off, we can get it out of the way. Huh. And so we just removed this hose from right here we're going to get this out of the way and that's going to be right here and you can see we lost the kind of piece that rubber piece that holds it on we're going to put that back into our hose here so we don't lose it and that's going to be oftentimes covered in oil as well and keep in mind this hose that goes onto the pump right here this goes to your brake booster and gives you power brakes so um, you know make sure if you crack that hose that you could potentially have uh, an issue with your brakes not working super well. So if you do end up cracking it, you are going to want to make sure you get it replaced. Now, I'm going to start with our screw on this back side here. This one's pretty easy to get to. It's a T30. You can't really see it from the angle we're at right now, but you can see it from up top. This is the, there's two on the front side of the engine and there's one towards the back. This one again, Pretty easy to access. You always want to make sure that you don't drop any of these screws. Again, more importantly, you, these are not just you don't want to have any screws in your engine bay, but you also need to reuse these. Now we have this screw under here that is not particularly easy to get to. What I'm using here is a T25, uh, a, a Torx bit itself. And what I'm using is a Torx bit so that you can get access because a lot of the normal uh, Torx bits you would use wouldn't work. This is a Torx driver along with an eight millimeter socket and an extension, which allows you to get the allows you to get the clearance you need to get this to clear because there's a lot of basically every other Torx bit I own that that has a driver on the back of it is going to be something that is not going to um, not going to fit in there so you can see how close this eight millimeter is to touching this housing right here and you'll, you'll know you definitely will not get a regular Torx bit that you see like this that has kind of a big uh, flange at the back of it. So without something like this, 
you're gonna need you're gonna need to do a Torx driver bit itself. And then I pick, stick my finger in there, grab it, and then pull it back like so. Now we're gonna get this last one here. And that is our T27. And then we'll take a screwdriver. Kind of pop it from the back. As you can see here, the face of this is going to roll on top of this stud here. I'm going to kind of wiggle it a little bit and get this, the drive part. Maybe I can take this stuff out of here. And this, this is actually which drives it, and we can roll that assembly right out of the way. Now, as you can see, we have quite a bit of oil now. That we want to kind of stick our rags in there and get as much of that soaked up as possible. And this right here is our mating surface for our gasket. There's a metal gasket that goes between this and the vacuum pump, the cylinder head and the vacuum pump itself. If you, that is a place it could leak, although that's not where they do leak, that's where it could leak if you were to do this job and, and not get a good seal between that vacuum pump and the uh, new seal that you, or the new metal gasket you replace it with. You would wanna get a gasket when you're buying this as well. Okay, so now we're ready to go back in and what we're gonna do is pop this piece out of here, just to give us the ability to get this thing rolled in a lot easier. And we have our gasket already on there. And one thing you wanna note is this drive has an orientation that's gonna be correct for your thing. So you wanna look inside, inside this hole uh, and see where the, the straight part is that you would actually run that drive on. So take note of that before you start in trying to install this thing because you will have a tough time if you try to install this without having any idea where that is. And again, gasket in place. We got that all set. I'm gonna roll this in there. And Now we're gonna get our gasket pulled back in place here. Now one thing I did do, just so you can note, there's a bracket over here 
that I've kind of pulled back a little bit and bent out of the way just to get this ear that goes to the block here to clear easier. And when, as you can see, once we got that thing all keyed in place, everything kind of sat down properly. And you, what you'll want to do now is check your gasket to make sure that your gasket's all in place the way it needs to be. Ours is good, so we're going to start by throwing one of these bolts back in place. And usually something like this, it's best to start with the easiest one to access. Which is going to be this top one. It does run through that bracket that you kind of bent out of the way a little bit. But that's going to be super tough. If you don't bend that thing out of the way, you're going to have a really tough time getting this thing in all the way. Okay, so that's threaded in place. We're not going to snug it all the way down. And before we let that one completely snug up, keep it loose, get that pump all the way in place here. And then we're gonna get our last one in place. And then we're gonna throw this back where it belongs in the pump. All right, so now we have to take this back out a little bit, pull it out, get ourselves set in place here, and then we can Kind of sit it all back together. There we go. Get everything back in there. And as you can see, we're now back in place there. And we can continue with installing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our last screw in. Now the bracket you kind of bent out of the way here is now what you have to put this screw through. So what I'm going to do is kind of push my fingers underneath here, locate with the tip of this screw where it belongs and I use that to kind of feed it in place and then I'll hold it and get my Torx bit into the head. All right now I'm going to snug this one up Make sure you don't lose your bit driver when you get in here. All right, that one's snugged up. And then get our T30 in there snugged up. Now, we can get our cover back on, and we're going to put all our screws and our bolt tray and then do them kind of one by one as we go. And what I'm going to do is try to rotate this in place and make sure, obviously there's a little bit of grime still around, so try to make sure you don't get any grime inside this vacuum pump. Don't want dirt and grime inside here. And you don't want to go too crazy tightening these because these are not big screws. So you could shear off the head of one of these if you're, if you're over tightening it. And then you'll be in real bad shape because these are not supposed to be serviceable parts. So you may end up having an issue with getting a replacement. I guess you could always reuse one of the old ones, but wouldn't want to have to do that. And now we are all snugged up and we can put our hose back on 
to our pump. Now, once you've gotten to this point, what you're going to want to do is clean off your engine very, very well. So you have the battery tray out, everything's ready to go. You can make sure you get some brake clean, clean the entire top of the transmission, clean every the whole area. I would not suggest leaving any oil left there because you will not be able to determine if you still have a leak, if you still have oil residue left over. That's the most important part when you're repairing an oil leak is clean the heck out of the car. Make sure that it's spotless when you're done so that if you have anything else going on after the fact, you can track down where it's coming from specifically. That will prevent you from having to uh, pull your hair out to try to figure out if you have an oil leak, if it's from the repair you just did or if somewhere else is actually leaking. Now we are going to pop our vacuum pipe back in place. Again, this goes on the, to the brake booster back here. This is a big part of the reason why this vacuum pump exists. It's the main portion of the reason why it exists is to make sure you always have power brakes. So uh, we're gonna pop that back on. If you crack this hose along the way again, you will wanna replace that. Now, we can slide this out of the way. These are, we will wanna put that on, but actually we're gonna want to get this switch back in place first and want to clean that up a little bit. And there we go. And we have our two 10 millimeters. I'll get in place here. Make sure we get that lined up with where we had it. And then we can snug that up. And we're, again, we're keeping everything in our magnetic bolt tray Otherwise, it's easy to lose stuff along this process. Now, we can take these two 12s out that we had in here, get this mounted back where it belongs. Since I dropped one, I can at least put the other one in. Now we can get our 212 snugged up here. And then we are going to get this I'm not sure what I would refer to it. I referred to it earlier as a castle nut, which is kind of the reverse of what it is. It's like a castle nut that goes from the bottom instead of from the top, but same principle. Thread this nut down on top. And remember, we didn't use any tools to take it off. I'm just gonna snug it up by hand. And I'm gonna take this flathead screwdriver and bend these tabs up to prevent this thing from having any type of movement. All right. Now that's in place, we can get our bracket 
and the bracket does have an orientation. If you look at it, it has this straight line here, which should be pretty obvious kind of the direction it needs to go in since we knew where our shifter was. I'm not going to mess with putting that on yet until we get this washer and then our nut in place. And this is something that um, I shot when we shot the DIY on manual transmissions. Uh, this is something that people we've heard of snapping off before. So make sure that you torque this properly because if you don't, you can snap this off and then you'll have to replace internal transmission components to uh, to get a new uh, get a new shaft here replaced so we're just going to snug this up and we'll make sure we put this torque spec on the screen for you because i do not want to hear anybody broke this thing off and don't worry about gear because we got to shift back anyway so we can pop this in place and all we're going to do is push down and you may want to put like some silicone or some other lubricant on there. I'm going to dab a white lithium grease here, put it on the ball a little bit there. And that should. Pop on there pretty easy. Now that we've gotten to this point, the battery tray is reinstalled. Everything from here is basically just a reverse of the previous uh, removal of all these items that includes the intake, uh, the, the all the duct work, and all the other things. So you will want to make sure that things like secondary air injection pipes you get clipped in all the way, and things like that. But those are very small details along the way, and you are all set with your 2.5 vacuum pump install. Thank you so much for watching our. DIY on how to install a 2.5 vacuum pump. Again, purchases for parts like this or any others help support videos just like this one. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you more like it.